of you, so let's look at page number one. The title of our message this morning is The Conflict. Anybody know anything about the conflict? How many is going through a conflict now? Everybody is. Every believer is. So we start our first reading here in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 6, verse 12. And we are encouraged and admonished by the writer here. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And in the Amplified, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confessed the good confession of faith before many witnesses. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory, and through, and though, uh, and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. That was the Amplified. You can read the, the uh, King James there to yourself. <laughs> I started out in King James, but I t- <laughs> okay. Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any uh, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Looking at the same verse, well, I tell you what, we'll bypass that. You can read it when you get home. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. With thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, let's go to... Page 3, Galatians chapter 5, we'll start reading at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. I'm going to read it, the Amplified. But I say, 
walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of human nature without God. For the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are opposed to the flesh, godless human nature. For these are antagonistic to each other, con continually withstanding and in conflict with each other so that you are not free but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. I don't see how you can make it any more plainer than that. So if you're walking around today between two elbows, you got your feet on the ground, you're in conflict. You wake up every morning, you're in conflict. It's the nature. We're called in this battle. It's, it, it's a warfare. And you know, like any other soldier, you know, you have to be prepared. You have to, you have to be trained in order to win in this warfare. It does not come except by battle. You have to win these victories. Almost immediately after the believer realizes what it is to have eternal life in Christ, he is brought face to face with conflict. Now last week, Brother Bruce asked the audience how many knows what Eternal, what is the definition of eternal life? Well, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't know it. But the Bible is very clear about what the uh, definition of uh, eternal life is. Open your Bible to St. John chapter 17, verse 3. St. John, chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Now I'm going to read the definition here in the uh, Amplified. And this is life eternal. It means to know, to perceive, recognize, become acquainted with, and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent, whom you have sent. So what we see here, the definition of eternal life in just a few words means to know him. Is that right? That's what the Bible says, to know him. Well, what does it mean to know him? Now, you know, when I was about uh, 20 years old, I got acquainted with a girl over there. Her name's Bessie. And she was a, about uh, a year younger, I guess, than me. But I knew her. I knew her uh, as a, a fine person. I knew her as a pretty girl. But you know, now, 60 years later, I really know her. You understand what I'm saying? All you, when you say I know somebody, you don't really know them till you live with them. Amen. 
And when we come to know him like that, you know, uh, you know, I thought I loved her. I thought I loved her when we got married, and I think I did. But let me tell you something. I know now I love her. You see, after 60 years, you see what I'm saying? It's, I've, I know how she thinks when she does think, and I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. Huh? But, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I, I, I'll tell you what, I've never, I'm so amazed sometimes, I'll be thinking about something, driving over here, this happened many times, I just, I, anymore, I don't even say anything about it. And you know what? She'll bring it up, what I'm thinking about. And so uh, I, I just, I, most time I don't even say anything to Bessie, but that's what I was thinking. She'll start talking about it. And, you, you know, she knows me too. I want to tell you what kind of a knowing that he's talking about here. If you got your Bibles there, open it up to Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10. Now, I'm going to read this out of the Amplified, and you can follow along with me out of your King James there. But I tell you what, it's about 10 years ago, I cut that out, this verse of Scripture, these two verses, and pasted it in the cover of my Bible. I say 10, it's been a long time. Because it tells us what Paul is talking about when he said, I want to know him. Well, a lot of people know Christ as a historical figure. They know a little bit about him. Uh, they've heard and they've read. They, But let me tell you something, not very many people know him. Not very many people. Because I'm going to read to you here what Paul meant when he said, I want to know him. For my determinate purpose is that I may know him. That I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly and that I may in that sense that same way come to know the power overflowing from his resurrection which it exerts over believers and that I may so share his suffering as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness even to his death in the hope that if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lift me out of from among the dead, even while in this body. You know, the whole world lies in death. They're dead in trespasses and sins. Do you know the power of God that was given to you, do you know that that is the power of God that raised Christ from the dead, that raised you up out of the dead while you're in your mortal body? He put life in you, the life of Christ. Amen. i tell you what, that is rich to me. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand a moment. <clears throat> Father God, this morning, Lord, as we come to the throne of grace, thank you, Lord, for your precious word that lies open before us. Thank you, Lord, for the exceeding greatness of your promises, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, that you come to confirm your word in the life of your believers. O oh God, that you will transform us, Lord, for your word admonishes us to be not conformed to this world, to, but be transformed by a renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God.
God, this only comes as we know you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord. To know you, Lord, is life, life, everlasting, eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of truth, Lord, that leads us to the light of truth. Now, Father, I pray you'll bless everyone that's come out this morning. Meet the needs of your children, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. It is imperative. There's no way getting around this if you want to walk in a victorious liberty with Christ. That we must understand clearly the principles on which the warfare is to be waged. The scripture said, we battle not against flesh and blood, but our battle is in the spirit realm. Amen. Number two, and what are the essential conditions to be maintained in order that there should be not just conflict, but victorious conflict. That's what we want, ain't it? Victorious conflict. Now, the first thing to be noticed is the preparation for the battle. Is the preparation for the battle. Turn, if you would, to the Bible there, Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Now we're going to be talking a lot this morning about strength, about power. And that's one of the first essentials. You've got to understand how <laughs> the, the source of your strength in this warfare, the source of your victory. And brother and sister, I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not in you. You are not the source. If you're trying to wage this warfare in yourself, you're fighting a losing battle. But the whole Bible is filled with examples and, and encouraging words where your strength lies. In Psalms 37, look at verse number 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. Isn't that what we preach around here? Salvation is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. You hear that? He is their strength. And don't look to your flesh to get you out of whatever you're in. Amen. You're Flesh is your problem, but you have to learn how to overcome that flesh. And it's not in your own strength. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, Finally, my brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. You may be at, on your deathbed. The weakest place I guess you could be. But he says, be strong in the Lord. John chapter 15, verse number 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And you know what that word nothing means in the Greek? Nothing. It means the same thing, nothing. In other words, you have no ability, you have no power, or you have no strength in this warfare in yourself. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13 Paul, he found the key to victory. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
Amen. We must know what it is to become strengthened in the Lord. Amen. Now let's turn our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Now, come on now. This is, this is something you've got to make application, folks. A preacher can preach up here his heart out. And, if, and as soon as you walk out the building, you forget it. You just, you, it's like you never even heard it. If you don't make application, that's where you've got to, you need to sit under a ministry that's going to give you the tools that you can apply in your life. See? If you're not getting it here, then you ought to find you a church where you can hear and make application to what you hear. But notice what Paul's saying here. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass. Now what are you talking about there? A glass, a mirror. You look in a mirror. Now the mirror is not going to show you what you want to see. But, you know, it's going to show you the same ugly face that's looking at it. It's going to reflect it right back. You see what I'm saying? We look through this glass. And, you know, I'm looking at that glass. It just shows what it is, what's there. It just get, tells you. It don't, it don't shade nothing over. It don't try to use makeup to cover something up. No, no, it just... It just, you look at that mirror and it gives you a look at, right back at you. You see what? And that's what he's talking about here. Now, when the mirror that he's talking about is the Word of God. When we look in this Word, if you never take time to look in the Word, you'll, you're never going to reflect the image of Christ. Amen. Forget it. No, now, notice. Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord by are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, when you look in this word, amen, it's going to have a reaction. It's going to change you. If you look at it honestly, sincerely, and you're praying, oh God, reveal to me your will, your word, your, reveal to me you, Christ. It's going to reflect it. And you're going to reflect what you see. What you see means to understand. What you understand, you're going to start reflecting it in your life. Back on the table this morning, I got a... a uh, Message, Brother Pink preached on it's a it's a series I've been putting back there on the uh, studies on saving faith and the lesson this morning that's back there is coming to Christ with your will and then Brother Pink goes on and he said now there's three elements to a human being that God really works on. And number one is your understanding. These are the elements that all creatures, humans, they act on. Their understanding is number one. And number two is their affections. What they love to do, what they love to participate, their affections. And number three, is their will. Man does nothing against his will. Amen. That's why the scripture says over there in, in Psalms 110, I believe, it says uh, about the, uh, for they, sh they shall be made willing in the day of your power. 
Amen. When the power of the Holy Ghost, you, they will be made willing. But man is not willing except God does something for him. Amen. But that is a very interesting chapter that's laying there on the table. Be sure and get that. <clears throat> Amen. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Now, we all like to hear the message of eternal security. We like to hear the, the, the sovereign grace of God. And we, like to, we believe that salvation is of the Lord. It's by His power by his will and by his word we're saved but now notice this in verse 29 for whom he did foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son to the that he might be the firstborn among many brethren brothers that's what we are called to be. That's what we are called to become. The image of Christ. I was, me and Richard was talking this morning. He got him a new cap. United States Air Force veteran. And uh, I, I made this. I, was, I got one that says the Marines. I said, I wish people could recognize my Christianity more than they do what branch of the service I was in, you know? That ain't nothing. But wouldn't it be great as, oh, I see you're a Christian. Well, how'd you know? Oh, I just can tell the way you act. So far, I've gone incognito. They don't recognize me as a Christian. But I want that changed. And if I get in the image of Christ, it will be changed. You see what I'm saying? Can't hardly hold nothing. That's the way I've been the last week or so, just shaking like a leaf. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the apostle addresses himself to those who have, oh yeah, here it is. Now he is preaching to people that already know and they apprehend the truth of their judicial position in Christ. Now, you know, I've preached on this position and condition. Y'all ever remember me? Ever hear that? Well, that's what it's talking about. See, you're position in Christ is eternally secured and it n never changes but your condition it changes a lot don't it amen there's times it, I don't feel like a Christian I don't look like a Christian I don't act like a Christian you see what I'm saying that's my condition but my position in Christ, that's judicially, it's secured. Amen. But these people that he's preaching, this, uh, this message, Paul's already preached it. I'm just following along behind him and preaching what he said in the scripture. They uh, recognized their judicial position. All right. It is not now a question of salvation, but of becoming practically strengthened in Him. That's just what this is about. But, brother, it goes back to what I said earlier. You've got to apply the Word of God that you hear, that you read in the Scripture. It the Bible won't mean, 
you won't get nothing out of it if you just lay it on the table all the time and you only pick it up when you go to church. That ain't going to help you. Amen. You've got to get it out of here into here. Amen. It is something that he presses upon them as that which is absolutely essential for Christian conflict. This is absolutely necessity. There's no shortcuts. It is, brother, it is practical application of what the Word of God says that I must apply in my life. Amen. But how do we obey this exhortation? To be made powerful in the Lord is to occupy a certain position from which alone the battle can be successively waged. Amen. Let's turn our Bible. Let me look at the page number uh, four. Page five. Let me, page number five. In order to do this, we must first see clearly the nature of the victory the Lord Jesus has obtained for his people. Let's go to Zechariah chapter four. Now we're looking at the nature. What kind of a victory? is this that we can expect. Zechariah, here it is. Zechariah chapter 4. Four, verse 6. What's the nature of this warfare that we're going to be engaged in? Zechariah chapter 4, verse number 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. So we see right now, this is a different kind of a warfare. This is it. It's not in the flesh. My battle is not against people or persons. It's against high principalities and powers of the devil. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah. Chapter uh, 9, verse 23. 9. There by there. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in 